We're at the ASUS booth here at CES 2024 to see something that I really wasn't expecting this soon. We're used to seeing NUX. Intel has been making them for a long time. They're really awesome, small computers with a lot of horsepower generally relative to their size. But having ASUS before that is a new thing. See, back last year, ASUS acquired the NUC everything, apparently even employees, which is kind of crazy. Fast forward like a couple of months, and there's now an ROG NUC. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna be cheap, but it looks cool, and I imagine it's gonna go pretty fast. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a box, so the unboxing is gonna have to be taking the thing apart, which when I asked about it, they were a little skittish. We'll see what happens there. <laughs> For IO on the back, we've got another two 10 gig USB ports. These ones curiously are labeled as 10 gig, but you can see that they're little black ports. These are just gonna be USB 2.0. They just have to fix the silk screen for the mass production version. We've got 2.5 gig Intel Ethernet, a 40 gigabit Thunderbolt port that does do USB power delivery. They would expect if the system is you know, not running like a gaming load that this can put out around 90 watts and then during gaming about 65 if it needs to. So it's kind of a dynamic power delivery. Got HDMI 2.1, DP 1.4A. And then they power in for the big power brick. That means you can run four 4K displays off of this machine. I kind of doubt that most people will do that, but if you wanted to, you could. And there's also a Kensington lock, which is a nice thing to see. And around front, we have those other two USB ports, an SD card reader, and a combo mic headphone jack. And then the power button. So why don't we turn it on? Hey, it works. NVIDIA confidential, what the heck? Show it, get Asus in trouble. <laughs> As configured, this is the Core 7 155H configuration, so this is the lower end model, but still testing pretty good. Like 32,000 in CPU mark is pretty respectable. For the 3D mark, this is what I'm more curious about. 3060 Ti score is like 20,000 and a half. During the past mark run, the highest we got on the GPU was 103 watts. And the highest we got on the CPU was also 103 watts. <laughs> that being said, any sort of like temperature or performance numbers are kind of to be taken with a grain of salt. Um, this is a pre-production unit. It's st still scoring pretty well, but could be different than what you end up with. And also this is the lower end model. Um, maybe we run like Cinebench just for funsies. The CPU is at 106 degrees, but it is drawing 100 watts. Technically, Intel only rates the CPU to stay sustained at 65 watts. Anything higher than that is turbo, so it is still turbo -ing. It really doesn't feel like the fans are going that hard. Maybe it's because it's an engineering sample. Maybe it's because they just want it to be a quiet system. There's definitely heat coming off there though. I mean, sure, it's not a Cinebench content creation machine, but it's still scoring well above a 5800X desktop chip in Cinebench. And this is the lower end SKU. This is hilarious. Fred River 2990WX, 32 cores, 1200 points. This is 1000 points. This is 32 cores from several years ago is only 20% faster than this 16 cores. <laughs> I've never run Cinebench GPU. I didn't even know that this was a thing. Wow. It scores the same as a Radeon Pro W6800, which I have zero context for. 1440p right now. Um, I get 200 FPS. I mean, performing pretty well. I don't know. I honestly don't have that much context for CS2 as to what this would be, but you guys can make your own judgment based on that. 1440p, maxed out the settings. We tried to update the Nvidia drivers and it didn't work. It's pre-release hardware, so probably some Nvidia lock. But in the game, our GPU was drawing between 100 and 90 watts pretty consistently, sitting at around 70 degrees. The CPU temp is high. I have a sneaking suspicion that maybe there is something going on with the CPU cooler given that it's a pre-release. It wasn't drawing much power, seemingly in the 30 to 45 watt range. Stayed reasonably quiet, although the noise floor in here is super high. Cool, let's take it apart. But first, let me tell you about our sponsor. Thanks to Be Quiet for sponsoring our 2024 CES coverage. If you're shopping for your next PC or just new components in general, make sure to check out Be Quiet. Their premium products include PC cases, power supplies, water and air cooling, and fans for desktop PCs. With roots in Germany, they've been in the industry for more than 20 years and specialize in making high quality parts that are nearly inaudible. This year at CES, they're showcasing new white PC cases, white fans, and even white hard drive cages. So step into the world of silent computing with Be Quiet at the link down below. Oh, look at that beauty. Woo! Damn, boy. <laughs> That's some big fans. It looks like this whole section here 
is just one big old heat sink. And then you've got two discrete blower style fans. I give you my word it will go back together. I'm not giving you my word that it will work. For storage, right now, it's a Samsung kind of OEM looking SSD. Uh, they have not confirmed this yet, uh, or the capacities even, but they said they probably expect maybe a 512 and a one terabyte SKU. But the interesting thing is you will be able to buy this as a bare bones, which is pretty cool. Not something I would expect from Asus, but welcome nonetheless. Regardless of what spec you were to buy, there is three M.2 slots. They are all PCIe Gen 4x4. You could load this thing up with like 24 terabytes of Sabrent 8 terabyte drives if you wanted. It's SODIMM slots, which is great. I would kind of expect a system like this to have soldered memory, which is a sad state of affairs, but this one does not. Uh, they expect the actual configurations to be a 1632 probably, but you could also get it bare bones and put whatever you want in it. I asked if in the BIOS you'll be able to screw around with like memory timings, and the answer I got was TBD. Uh, but at the very least, it will work with 5600, which is reasonably fast for a system like this. I got confirmation there won't be any sort of XMP settings. It's because Intel Meteor Lake doesn't support it. So they're, they're taking the easy route and saying, well, Intel said I can't do it. <laughs> I've seen motherboard computer manufacturers go around stuff like that before. Just saying, just saying. All of the M.2 slots have a toolless mechanism to kind of go along with the toolless theme. This one is an Intel Killer AX1690i. It's a 2x2 two two Wi-Fi 6E chip, so it can do a 160 wide 6E. Okay, so there's the Wi-Fi antenna. That's cool. That's a good place to put them, on the front. <laughs> so even if you slide this into your like media console or whatever, it still has the antennas exposed. They don't have a backup of this. So if I break it, it's the demo is broken and... Woo! Woo! Hey, look at that. Woo! The CPU looks so baby compared to the GPU. <laughs> Speaking of CPU, there's going to be two options for this chassis, a Core Ultra 9 185H and a Core Ultra 7 155H. They're both 16 core chips. They both have the same performance, efficiency, low power efficiency configuration. The main difference, boost clocks and base clocks are going to be higher on the Ultra 9. And then you're also going to see a lower base power on the Ultra 7, and the GPU will be a little bit slower. That being said, the TDP of both is technically the same, 45 watts, and the max assured power, which is what Intel rates in optimal circumstances it should be able to run consistently at, is the same on both. And uh, ASUS is saying that they should be able to run at that 65 watt TDP consistently with this thermal solution. That being said, when you move over to the GPU, there is some kind of funky power stuff going on there. This can either be an RTX 4060 or 4070, obviously the mobile SKU. Uh, so you're looking at 115 watt TDP on both of those chips, but they have dynamic boost, which means it can kind of intelligently steal power from the CPU and allocate it to the GPU if it thinks that that will give you a better gaming experience, which a lot of the time uh, it can. So it can go all the way up to 140 watts, which again, ASUS says they're targeting to make sure it can do sustain consistently uh, and handle that full load, which is great because sometimes you see like a 4060 or 4070 in a laptop and you're like, oh, that's great. And then it's a 35 watt capped 4070 and you're like, okay, that's not really what I was wanting to buy. <laughs> there is a vapor chamber over the GPU, which is pretty baller. And then the CPU just has these two gargantuan heat pipes. Overall, it seems like a relatively serviceable, relatively toolless, at least as far as uh, normies would go, let's say. You can buy it as a bare bones, which I like, but there is still kind of one caveat, which is the price. If you look at other kind of big brands, similar systems, it's not entirely out to lunch. I was told you're looking around $1,400 to $1,500 for the bare bones with the 4060 and the lower end for seven and probably around $1,800 for the bare bones of the higher end 4070 SKU. If you were gonna purchase a complete system with RAM and storage, you're looking around 17 to 1800 for the lower tier 4060 model or around 21 to 22 for the higher end 4070 model, which is not nothing. It's a fair bit of money. I don't know what else I would compare it to. It, obviously, if you compare to a custom built system, which is gonna be a lot larger, you have to build it, all these things. Obviously, the price to performance is not going to be the same. But if you need something that's small, seemingly quiet, and seemingly toolless, this could be a serious option to look at. You'll see in a few months, I guess. Maybe we'll do a full review. Let us know down in the comments if you want to see that. Get subscribed.
like. Don't miss out at the rest of our CES show coverage. Goodbye.